Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about A Fisherman of the Inland Sea, sometimes called Another Story, um, by the author Ursula K. Le Guin, one of my personal favorite authors. And as always, we're going to start off with a passage from the story. And I cut a couple things out um, just to kind of make sure that the passage fit well with what we wanted to talk about in this video. So let's hop into it. I found out I was in love with you winter before last, she said. She had slipped off the table and was at the door. I did not follow her. I had nothing to say to her, literally. I felt it would take me a month, a year, years to find the words I needed to say to her. I had been so rich, so comfortably complete in myself and my ambition and my destiny five minutes ago, and now I stood empty, silent, poor, looking at the world I had thrown away. All my life since, I have thought of it as the hour in the bathhouse. I sat on the high bench where Sidri had sat, the rain fell, and the river roared, and the early night came on. So, um, let's go ahead and move on into our summary for this story. Now, the summary of the story is going to be a little wonky just because we need to talk a little bit about the setting of the story and the universe where this story is set in. So, um, this summary is going to be broken up into three parts. We're going to talk first about kind of the Hainish cycle, which this story is a part of, talk a little bit about the setting, and then get into the plot itself. So, A Fisherman of the Inland Sea, or Another Story, as it's sometimes called, by Ursula K. Le Guin, is a work within her Hainish cycle, along with a number of other works, two of the most notable works from the cycle being the novels The Left Hand of Darkness and The Dispossessed, both of which I recommend. Um, the Hainish cycle takes place in a vast universe where technology has helped create a galactic network known as the Ecumen. The Ecumen is led by the Hainish people, who are also the origin of all humanoid life in the galaxy. Um, there's a couple of small exceptions um, in some of the stories, but practically speaking, all humanoid life in the galaxy. Uh, throughout the Hainish cycle, more and more lost humanoid worlds are reunited with the Ecumen. Le Guin often uses worlds of the Hainish cycle to explore different imagined societies and ways of being, and that's what the Hainish cycle is all about. So let's go ahead and move on into the setting for this story. A Fisherman of the Inland Sea tells the story of the scientist Hideo from the planet O. O is one of the closest humanoid worlds to the Hainish homeworld, Hain. O is, in many ways, an example of a utopia. Society on O is made up of dispersed villages integrated into the local watersheds. Technology is still present, but there is no ongoing push for new technology or growth without purpose. Instead, the main focus of society is the formation of marriage groups called Sidoritu, which I'm not pronouncing right, but it's a made-up word as far as I can tell, so we're going to go with it. Sidoritu. And on what they call thick planning, which is a mixture of ecology, architecture, and art with the intent of living in harmony. And so with that, let's go ahead and move on into the plot itself of this story. In the story, Hideo, our main character, the scientist, leaves behind his childhood loves and his family to go off and work for the Ecumen on Hain. However, because of the distance between planets, Hideo effectively misses four years of life back on O each time he travels. On Hain, Hideo works to create technology that will allow him to instantly teleport between worlds. However, early tests with the device suggest that teleportation may have strange side effects. After working on the project for years, Hideo takes a ship back to his home planet of O to see his family and work on the teleportation project in the labs there. When there, he begins to realize that he should have stayed on O the whole time and appreciated his family and the people who loved him there. While working on the teleportation project, the project accidentally sends him back in time rather than through space. Sent back in time to the night before he left to work for the Ecumen, he instead chooses to stay on O rather than go off to Hain. This time, he's able to stay with his childhood loves and care for his family as he settles down to live out the rest of his life on O. And the story ends with kind of some pondering about kind of his situation. In many ways, this story is about life and how one chooses to flow with it or against it. A continuing symbol for life in Le Guin's work is water. To quote from the story again, when Hideo describes the Cedri, she swam in life as she had swum, swum in the river like a fish at home. If water then is a symbol for life, the whirlpools are an apt analogy for the structure of Hideo's life, the moment in the boathouse is the point one chooses to set off on life or turn away, and the fisherman is the symbol of someone floating above life, waiting for a future moment or catch, if you want to think of it that way. And so one of the big questions of this story is about how we should live. In your opinion, 
Is it better to live working towards a future goal or is it better to live in the moment? To use the stories frame, is it better to be a fisherman or a fish? As always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. I hope you enjoyed this story and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.